hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at triglycerides and phospholipids. We're going to be looking at their structure and their function, what they do and where they do it. Now there are lots of things that you need to be able to remember and names that you need to be able to interpret in this video. So to help you with all of that over on our website there are a load of multiple choice questions just waiting to help you revise. A triglyceride is three fatty acids that have been added to glycerol. Glycerol is short with three carbons and each carbon has an OH group coming off it. It is to these OH groups that the three fatty acids will be added. The end of a fatty acid that gets added to the glycerol has a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, the carbon is bonded to an OH group. Here I've drawn R groups, R, R dash and R dash dash, just to show that they are different. When the fatty acids bond to the glycerol, the OH groups on either side will lose a water and become an oxygen in between the two carbons. This will then lead onto the three fatty acid chains. When this bonding takes place, we will lose three water molecules, one from each bond that has been formed. When we lose water in a reaction, this is a condensation reaction. So glycerol and three fatty acids will combine to make a triglyceride and three small molecules of water. The bond that is formed is an ester bond. The glycerol part is always the same. The structure of that doesn't change. The differences come from the fatty acids. The differences in the R group, because each fatty acid chain can be different and there are over 70 different fatty acids, leads to a wide variety of triglycerides that can be produced. These different fatty acids means that we can get saturated, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated triglycerides. The structure of the fatty acids will influence the structure and thus the properties of the triglyceride. Here we have three different triglycerides and you can see the structures are different. The first one is saturated. There are no double bonds in the fatty acid. They are all single carbon-carbon bonds. The middle triglyceride is monounsaturated. This means there is one carbon-carbon double bond in there. And you can see it changes the way the fatty acid lies. The last example is polyunsaturated, meaning that there are lots of carbon-carbon double bonds. And these double bonds are responsible for changing the shape and the structure of the triglyceride. The more double bonds there are, the less the triglycerides can pack together. You're going to see lots of double bonds or a polyunsaturated triglyceride in an oil, a liquid, and the saturated triglycerides with no carbon-carbon double bonds are going to be the fats, which are going to be solid. You need to be aware of the structure and the properties of triglycerides. When triglycerides are oxidised, they release water. This can be an important source of water for organisms whom water isn't readily available. They have lots of carbon-hydrogen bonds, which are an important store of energy. Triglycerides are large non-polar molecules that are insoluble in water. 
Thus, they're going to have no effect on the osmosis in cells. Large amounts of energy can be stored in a small volume of triglycerides compared to carbohydrates. You also need to know about phospholipids, which are similar but structurally different. They only have two fatty acids chain and the third fatty acid chain is replaced by a phosphate group. Again, this is based around glycerol, which has the same three carbon structure, but we are only going to add on two fatty acids. Instead of that third fatty acid, a phosphate group is going to be added on. And I'm just drawing it over the other side to stick with convention. A similar reaction is going to take place, a condensation reaction where we lose water every single time. And again, an ester bond is going to be formed. Drawing out the phospholipid, it looks very similar at the start to a triglyceride, with our two fatty acid chains being added on to glycerol. But instead of the third fatty acid chain, a phosphate group goes in its place. And again, I'm just drawing it over the other side for convention. The phosphate group and the glycerol will become known as the phosphate head, which is hydrophilic. The fatty acid tails are hydrophobic. Just as with triglycerides, the bond that we can see in here is an ester bond. I'm just going to redraw the phospholipid in a slightly less complex way to illustrate the next point. A phospholipid is made up of a phosphate head, which is hydrophilic, and a hydrophobic tail. This is another example of where understanding the etymology of words will help you remember their functions. Hydro is water, phobic, hate, philic, love. So hydrophilic loves water and hydrophobic hates water. Thus, the hydrophilic head is going to be attracted to water and will interact with water and will repel fats. But conversely, the other half of the molecule, the hydrophobic tail, will repel water. And it will interact readily and easily with fats and oils. Phospholipids make up the cell membranes. These are the membranes that are around the cells and also the membranes that are around the individual organelles within the cells. The polar nature of the phospholipids allows the molecule to form a bilayer. This allows for a hydrophobic barrier to be established between the inside and the outside of cells. The hydrophilic, the phosphate heads, are on the outside, on either side of the membrane. The hydrophobic, the fatty acid tails, are internal to the membrane. And these can form glycolipids with the carbohydrates that are in the membrane, that are part of the membrane. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.